You know, me being as big a Dragon Ball Z fan as I am, it's kind of criminal I don't have enough Dragon Ball content out here. So, <laughs> let's fix that. made one of these in a while top five saddest Dragon Ball Z deaths <laughs> just in case your day didn't have enough negativity you could always count on me number five I'm giving the edge to Piccolo in a Saiyan arc what was great about his death well I mean I wouldn't call it necessarily great in the technical sense of great but it had impact, man. It had impact. Look, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. What we know about Piccolo is basically what anyone knew about Piccolo at the time. He hated Goku. <laughs> A lot of folks hated Goku. <laughs> but he was one of the first ones to hate Goku. You know, he was in the Dragon Ball era. Before we got anyone we had in Dragon Ball Z, it was Piccolo. Yet, somehow, through training Gohan, the man became this almost father figure to Gohan. So to see him do what practically any father would do and save his surrogate son is actually kind of crazy. And if we being honest, I don't even think Piccolo, that Piccolo anyway, was evil. Just, uh, existing in my eyes. But, yeah. Seeing him go out the way he did was kind of sad. And then the next arc just kind of... Never mind. Number four. Bardock. Only two. Only two people on this list, in my opinion, got hoed so bad in Dragon Ball Z. Bardock is definitely one of them. Just because he got hoed, I should have made him a lot higher on this list. This man went out like a warrior should go out. I don't. It doesn't get much more badass than what Bardock pulled in his final moments. But man, when he gets obliterated back to the past, and then that little slight transition to... Him going out and Goku coming in and then Caviar playing in the background. Mwah! Wonderful. Too bad Frieza didn't give a shit. Number three. I was torn about this one, but yeah, this is actually sad too. Really sad. So I'm gonna give this one to Goku. In the Cell Saga anyway. I mean... This is the longest Goku's actually been alive in a season. So, obviously, everyone was going to get more attached to him, you know, because he's alive now and not dead or gone for six days. You know, he's actually there, present with Gohan in training, you know, <laughs> and what does he do? When he comes back, finally, you don't get to enjoy peace. Hell no, that's, this is not the life Goku lives. Hey, what Peace, what's that? He has to come back and fight some space galactic bio-android bug thing named Cell. And then when he cannot beat Cell, he sends his son to go beat Cell. To his credit, was more immensely powerful in comparison to both Goku and Cell, but still. Damn. Goku. Damn. Like. Damn. And when Gohan pulls a Super Saiyan and just becomes more bloodthirsty and, you know, refuses to finish the damn job. Goku has to save the day again. 
He hops in, he tells everybody goodbye, and then he takes a fat ass cell and instant transmissions him away from the planet onto King Kai's planet, killing him and everyone around him to save the Earth. Damn. Pretty badass way to go out, but if we're all being honest, anyone with blonde fucking hair could have killed Second Form Cell immediately. <laughs> Like, for real. Man, Goku, if you were gonna hop in, you should have just came in and gave Cell the old... Like, you could have whooped his ass at that point. Vegeta could have whooped his ass at that point. But we know why Vegeta didn't step in. Vegeta is... Vegeta, he's all in the camp of... If you die, you die, you know? But Goku? Really? Really? I don't think Piccolo would have done anything. He couldn't handle first form and he already fused with Kami. But definitely Trunks and Vegito could have, you know, and Goku. But I don't think Vegeta would have. But if anyone was going to act, I would assume Trunks or Goku would have. If not Gohan, because Gohan was... Huh. Hmm. Speaking of Vegeta. He's died before, and I was torn which one to include on this one. Either Namek Saga Vegeta... Or Boo Saga Vegeta. I gotta go with Boo Saga Vegeta. Boo Saga Vegeta has to be one of the most complex Vegetas. Namek, we kind of knew what he was on. You know, that was a chance that he could actually be free of Frieza. So, of course, he went all Manhunter on him. All he needed was the Dragon Balls, but no one told him about a password. But with Majin Buu, there was an era of peace. There was no need for this man to go Manhunter. Yet, Vegeta said, I need to beat Goku. He's only going to be here for a day. So, like, make me stronger <laughs> in a day. <laughs> I can't go back into the hyperbolic time chamber. Not that that would have worked. Goku's been dead for like seven years. So, of course, that dude got nothing but bullshit power-ups. Like, if you get stronger every time you almost die, if Goku gets to keep his body and train while dead, that dude is going to be even more immensely powerful, no? Vegeta didn't have a chance in hell. So, the Boo Saga in its entirety can be summed up with one phrase. What the fuck, Vegeta? That's it. That's the whole Boo Saga in a nutshell. He is the reason for Boo. And he is also the reason for Boo's demise. But, knowing that he is the reason for Boo, in one of these uh, episodes, he decides, Hey, I'm strong as hell now. I can take Boo. He couldn't. He got his ass kicked. Oh my god, it was bad. It was bad. And he thought he was, boy, thought it was spitting. He really thought, because he didn't got this Majin power up, that he's a Super Saiyan 2 plus. Then he was just gonna, boy, no, <laughs> boy, sit your butt up, bop, 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 hairline, have an ass, sit down, boy, hell nah, you, you're not, you're not like that, you don't have no Super Saiyan 3, no static, no nothing, boy, <laughs> you really thought, so, he did what Vegeta does, and says, if I can't beat him, bomb him, well, unfortunately for him, Majin Buu was balls OP and can regenerate, and Vegeta practically nuked himself, which was a whole slap in the face, in my opinion, because Vegeta, out of everybody in that arc, had the most growth. He helped everybody, then he doomed everybody, then he helped everybody again. Yeah, classic Vegeta. His final atonement will definitely be up there as the saddest for a lot of people, but that isn't the saddest to me. Number one. Oh boy. This one is a doozy. So, you know Vegeta has a kid. His name's Trunks. Real cool guy, you know? He's got a sword. He, he can go Super Saiyan. He destroyed Frieza and his dad. You know, Trunks, that guy. Amazing guy. Really good kid. But, 
I'm talking about a totally different Trunks from a totally different timeline. Not Kid Trunks. Kid Trunks is... Fuck Kid Trunks. I'm talking about Future Trunks. The saddest death by far, in my opinion, was his trainer, his master, Future Gohan's death. If you have not watched that, watch it. That, to me, is the saddest death in all of Dragon Ball Z history. Do you know the difference between future Gohan's death and everyone else's death on my list? Everyone else got to come back. Future Gohan never did. In an era where there was no Dragon Balls, death actually stuck. And what's crazy is we really we look at Dragon Ball Z as the silly comedy, action-packed hero anime, but they slap death in the face so many damn times. With everyone I've mentioned here, they've come back in some way, form, or fashion. Of course Goku was gonna come back to fight Boo. Of course Vegeta was gonna come back. Of course they gave Bardock a whole different special after getting obliterated by Frieza. Right? Everyone else has got to come back, Piccolo included. He's got to come back. Future Gohan, though, and he went out like a warrior, too. Not only did he not come back, I don't even think he got mentioned anywhere beyond Future Trunks, which is really fucked up. Future Trunks, he needed Gohan to die to become a full-blown Super Saiyan. It was highly effective, and it worked out in the end because Trunks, <laughs> as we know, Trunks does not play around. He gets the job done as fast as humanly possible. There is no Boo Saga. Trunks would not allow it. <laughs> That's what's so crazy about future Gohan's death is everyone else on my list got to come back. There's no Goku in this timeline. I don't even think they knew about Nunamic. Years have went by. Years. Literal years. So you know the rest of the gang ain't coming back either. Goku died from natural cause that time, so he's definitely not coming back. But I would assume had the storyline continued the way it continued with the, the original Dragon Ball Z plot, I feel like Gohan would have come back because he died defending Earth. Just like Goku did twice. And they let Goku keep his body, so why wouldn't they let Gohan keep his body, right? But I guess since the androids were just the problem that the Earth had, the upper worlds didn't see it fit to bring back Gohan. I don't think the androids thought to themselves, hey, we could probably go to other planets and just blow those up too. That's gonna do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think about this list? Who are your saddest deaths in Dragon Ball Z? If you got any, death has really got no consequence in Dragon Ball You know what? I'm rambling. I'm rambling. <laughs> anyway, I'm out. <laughs> Peace!